a mammoth tsunami strikes the eastern seaboard from Maine to the Florida Keys. It would be a disaster film of epic proportion. It would be sheer devastation, mass, loss of life, and destruction. Thousands injured or killed. Hundreds of thousands homeless. We saw this in Katrina, very similar here. It would take years for this area to recover. Some scientists believe this catastrophe could happen one day. But how? It's like a detective trying to find small pieces of a puzzle. The clues are hidden deep beneath the Earth. To reveal them, we will tap the latest scientific revelations and see our planet like never before. Across the Atlantic Ocean, in the Canary Islands, lies La Palma. Famed for its magical scenery, La Palma is a tourist paradise. This tiny island is barely a fourth the size of the smallest U.S. state. Yet some experts believe it could one day unleash a tsunami that would devastate the eastern seaboard. But how? The first clue is found as we use seismic data to gaze deep beneath the island. The X-ray reveals La Palma is just the tip of a vast underwater mountain. From seafloor to summit, it's more than 20,000 feet high, two-thirds the height of Mount Everest. Only one force of nature creates a conical mountain on the ocean floor. I have a really vague recollection of seeing a volcanic eruption on television as a really small kid. And it was the 1971 eruption. That year, La Palma's volcano Teneguilla exploded into life. My parents just got the first television, and I uh, remember being quite fascinated by this. Scientists believe just over four miles down lurk two huge reservoirs of semi-molten rock. They're more than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and believed to measure more than 30 miles wide. But why are they here? Geologists are convinced a colossal column of heat called a mantle plume rises from the superheated interior of the Earth. The plume is thought to be at least 20 million years old, and it's not cooling anytime soon. La Palma is the volcanically most active island in the entire Canary Archipelago. It's the period of island growth where eruptions are quite frequent. And I would be very, very surprised if there is no more eruptions here on the island. If we look at this volcano and how it's evolved over millions of years, it's likely that in the future it will erupt again, and it's likely that there will be another landslide. If that landslide happens, could the tsunami really have the power to cross the Atlantic Ocean? Tsunami expert Professor Stefan Grilli models a worst-case scenario. This model is a three-dimensional video simulating the collapse. The worst-case scenario would be 450 kilometers of material from the volcano would slide into the ocean. That's a landslide the size of 180,000 Great Pyramids. That would cause massive waves. Those waves near the volcano could reach 1,000 meters. So here is the next phase, uh, which is the wave propagation across the Atlantic Ocean. We 
we are reaching about three hours here. Moving very, very fast, the speed of a jetliner, about 500 miles an hour. And now it's about to reach the U.S. East Coast. Now another zoom on, on Atlantic City shows you the impact itself, causing an inundation that could reach um, eight to 10 meters. So a lot of flooding and the flooding penetrates inland quite a bit of distance. And this is not just a single wave. So you would have multiple waves and the tsunami impact lasts for tens of minutes, maybe hours. Depending on where you are on the East Coast, the impact will occur between seven and 12 hours after the collapse. The chaos would devastate towns along a thousand miles of the eastern seaboard. So here on the left is the envelope of maximum inundation along the coast. So you can see 14 states from Florida all the way to Maine being impacted by the tsunami. On Long Island, it's reaching about eight meters. 